The Keystone XL pipeline has been a source of extreme controversy for almost 11 years. Even before Joe Biden's inauguration, reports of his administration's intentions for his first 100 days in office had started to circulate. Foremost among the rumors was speculation about a massive slew of executive orders. Included in these executive orders, and among the purportedly 12 Biden is due to sign, is one that intends to decisively end the Keystone XL pipeline project. The Keystone XL pipeline began phase one construction in 2010. If completed, it would be a 1,900 kilometer oil and bitumen pipe system stretching from Alberta's oil fields to refineries in Steel City, Nebraska. Original projections estimated that this project would take two years to construct and would create over 42,000 temporary jobs. For Albertans, in conjunction with the Trans Mountain Pipeline, the Keystone XL project was a source of hope that they could revitalize their increasingly struggling oil sector. But the project hasn't been defined by the thousands of jobs it had hoped to create. From the outset, it has been highly politicized and mired in delays. The U.S. Democratic Party has made it exceptionally clear that they do not support the expansion or completion of the Keystone XL pipeline. Although this would create tens of thousands of temporary jobs, undoubtedly, and would largely be funded by the privately owned TC Energy, along with the Albertan government, Democrats don't see the economic benefits as outweighing the ecological impacts. They have also argued that the number of non-temporary jobs created would be largely insignificant. Chuck Schumer, the leader of the Senate Democrats, famously posed with a graphic that claimed only 35 permanent jobs would be created. Although this claim is hard to believe and is likely hyperbole, an EPA report concluded that over the 50-year lifetime of the pipeline, this could translate into releasing as much as 1.37 billion more tons of greenhouse gases into the atmosphere, equivalent to the yearly emissions from 5.7 million cars or nearly eight coal-fired power plants. Not to mention that the Keystone Pipeline has sprung a leak before, spilling over 790,000 litres of oil and damaging the ecosystem around it for lifetimes to come. Despite Trudeau's very public climate activism, and somewhat hypocritically, Trudeau has long supported this project, even amid often large-scale protests that Trudeau himself has attended, arguing that it is a great opportunity to reduce our reliance on foreign oil imports and create new jobs, which is exceptionally similar to the stance taken by the Conservative Party of Canada and Alberta's United Conservative Party. The nature of a construction project that traverses two Canadian provinces, three U.S. states, and plans to pass through the border between the United States and Canada means that every legislature that controls a border along its route has to approve it. With Alberta, Saskatchewan, Montana, South Dakota, Nebraska, and Canada's federal government all on board, the only impediment would be the U.S. federal government in Washington, D.C., and that's exactly how Biden plans to block it. Even though the Democrats have managed to gain control of the White House, the House of Representatives, and the Senate, Biden's executive orders don't rely on any consultation or approval from either houses of Congress. What an executive order actually is, is an extremely complex question to answer. Put as plainly as possible, it isn't technically a law, but can be equal to one. For example, Abraham Lincoln's Emancipation Proclamation that declared all persons held as slaves are and henceforth shall be free was an executive order. Like Trump's travel ban, which was an executive order, the only check on these pseudo-laws is the judiciary, but it's unlikely they would deem shutting down the Keystone XL pipeline as an overstep of the powers of the presidency, especially since the power and frequency of executive orders has only grown in recent years. Although Trudeau has been attempting to reach Biden in order to push him to align with the Albertan, Saskatchewan, and Canadian government's direction, Biden's chief of staff has already conveyed to the new administration that 12 executive orders will be signed on their first day of office. These will include permanently revoking Trump's travel bans, rejoining the Paris Climate Agreement, 
and of course, the ending of the Keystone XL project. The effects of this will be felt by Albertans immediately. It is likely that many companies were holding out on the hope of a Keystone pipeline to revitalize their industry, to justify keeping many of their workers. Most of Alberta's oil is extracted through oil sands, which rely on their plants continually maintaining pressure so the oil pushed to the surface, waiting to be extracted, isn't lost. And for the last few years, the cost of maintaining that pressure has been higher than the profits. Although executive orders can be revoked by any sitting president, if this order is signed, there won't be any real chance that the pipeline will be built for another four years, long enough to give up any hope of one day recouping the losses sustained from years of being in the red, which could spell doom for thousands of oil sector employees employed in one of Canada's few surplus provinces, and have trickle-down effects across Canada.